Trip Bradshaw with Bradshaw Financial Planning and Mind Your Money. And thank you for joining us for this education series. Uh, we're going to be talking about small business today, small business basics. I'm uh, going to touch on some retirement planning and also go through and, and, and take a look at some liability coverage and some other aspects that uh, we see with a lot of the small businesses that we work with. Uh, also got Brandon Rogers, Certified Financial Planner with us today. Uh, Brandon, thank you for joining us. Uh, definitely we'll talk about the retirement planning and uh, kick that off. So Brandon, I'm going to defer to you and uh, let's talk about some retirement planning for small businesses and some of the opportunities that obviously you and I see that may be overlooked by those uh, particular entities. Yeah, absolutely, Trent. Yeah, um, so we get this question a lot as far as I'm looking to set up a retirement plan for my business, which one is the right for me? So obviously, again, not it's not all one size fits all, but um, you kind of basically start the process by educating about how some of these different um, plans work. So uh, we've got a couple of different options here that we mainly see. Uh, if you're looking at three main options on, on the screen right now, first one everybody kind of has heard about and knows about is 401k plans. Well, 401k plans, obviously, uh, been around the tax code for a long time. It's their excellent plans. Uh, if, if you want to defer a lot of monies as far as on an annual basis, but also have a really good benefit out there for any employee that you're bringing on. Uh, obviously, it's, it's definitely, we see a lot of um, business owners put these plans in place to, to attract and retain uh, good help. So uh, when you look at the 401k side of the equation, that's going to be the most complex, probably one to set up and the most costly. You do have to set up, um, you know, a plan document that can be drafted by an attorney uh, that will that will actually have some upfront costs from there. Then you also got to do tax reporting uh, on, on that as well. You can be really specific as far as who you want to have in the plan, uh, age limits, working hours, you know, depends on, you know, how you want to set the plan up, but you definitely have that ability. As far as the deferrals, uh, there you can uh, an individual can put put away $19,500 a year in deferrals. You can put away more than that. If you're over age 50, um, you know, matching on there is definitely something that said some employers are going to put in the plan. There's various levels of matching and how you want to get that uh, accomplished. Safe Harbor, for instance, is, is a, a kind of real popular, easy way to do. Kind of takes some of the complexity out for the owner. But um, again, the 401k plans, they can be structured a number of different ways. You can put a defined contribution plan on there if you really want to defer uh, money's up to about 57000 a year. So I've heard a profit share plan from that end as far as um, $57,000 on an annual basis. So again, you can have some really high limits within it. Um, a lot of other businesses around here are looking at simple IRA plans. I'll probably say that's more of the popular one. For small business, you know, you have to have at least uh, or 100 employees or less to participate in this plan. And it's another good way to kind of set it up, would defer up to $13,500 a year. Again, additional catch up if you're over age 50. And then also the employer can actually put in a match on there uh, as high as 3% of their pay. So um, that's another good way to set up an easy plan. It's not as uh, stringent as setting up a 401k, not as costly on an annual basis. So uh, that's a real popular one as well. Um, then finally, what we got on here to look at is the SEP IRA plans, right? So with the SEP IRA side of the equation, you don't see a lot of people really using these unless you really are probably in business for yourself. The reason is there's if whatever amount that you put in, you have to defer the same percentage for your employees. But um, again, for someone that just maybe has a sole proprietorship or something like that, or work in business for themselves, it's actually a really good option to have a set plan in there because you can defer up to $57,000 or 25% of your income that, that you, that you show through the business. So another, another good option. So um then all these plans, you know, you mostly got all pre-tax money. Another good thing about the 401ks is you can put a Roth option there if you want to. Um, again, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good plan, but it's just more costly to administer. But um, again, we could we could do a whole section on these plans. But, um, you know, there, there's some some pretty good options out there. It really just depends on how your business is structured and how many employees you got and how much you're looking to defer. Well, really, the, the retirement plans also serve kind of as a Another benefit that you can offer your employees to keep those employees in house, because as we know, with small businesses, some of the largest expense comes from hiring and training employees and giving them the benefits package they're looking at. And, and definitely the simple IRA, SEP and the 401k can help accomplish a large part of that. Absolutely. Yeah. So a ton, ton of different options out there for sure. But uh, there's some good ones out there, depending on what you need. So um, we'll go kind of go over to the next next slide that we're looking at. It talks about general planning. 
obviously this is looking at um, succession or transition planning, valuation of businesses, and you know it, it, what is your exit strategy as a business owner. So uh, Trent, let's take us through some of these uh, options on this page. Yeah, we see that a lot, Brandon. You know, when we do our overall estate planning, financial planning uh, within uh, a, a client meeting, one of the things that we ask small business owners is about continuity and, and whether they have a plan in place to transition the value of their business to the next generation or maybe to an employee that currently works with them that has an interest in potentially running the business. Because the one thing we don't want to do is the business owner to walk away from their business with no value because it's going to serve as a large part of their retirement. So as you'll see, we took the succession or transition planning. We, we got to make sure that we've got some type of goal or written plan in place. We at least need to talk about it and, and get an idea of what the goals are of the business owner and what their expectations are going forward. Normally, we'll engage an attorney to help us uh, draft necessary paperwork to have that ready to go. And um, in most cases, also talk to the CPA and make sure we're structuring things uh, as the most attract in the most attractive way for the business owner. But definitely contracts. You'll see the second column here, contracts, definitely important. Got to make sure you protect your business too. If you hire employees, you bring employees in and they're working for you, you, you you've got intellectual property may, uh, and, and some other things within the business that, that are very key to the success of that business. You want to make sure you protect and, and don't give uh, the opportunity for that technology or idea to leave your company if an employee were to leave down the road. Uh, so having a contracts in place, employment contracts is very important. Also business valuation, the, the third column here, definitely want to look and see and how your business would be valued. I know Brandon in the financial industry, it's valued differently than say a CPA or accounting firm, vice versa compared to a trucking company. So there's different ways and different methods of value, valuing your business and, and determining how much it's worth. Uh, you need to know what that is periodically. I would recommend probably getting a valuation done at a minimum, probably every three years to make sure that you're following and tracking that valuation. So you can basically track that opportunity within your overall financial plan and what the company is worth and what that could mean for you in retirement as the business owner. And then last, ID or, 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 or eligible buyers, we, we need to ID who that right person is in regards to succession. We need to see if there's anyone out there. If not, we need to look for potential brokers that may be in your specific industry that would be experts in that industry to be able to find a buyer down the road. You don't want to wait to the last minute to get this done. You want to have a plan in place and know where you're going to go. So, Let's flip over to the next uh, slide. We're going to talk about insurance and liability coverage. Brandon, why don't you take that one? Yeah, when we were looking at this, another really important piece to a, you know, any small business or large business for that matter is looking at insurance uh, policies. What kind of things should I have in place and, and also protection against liability uh, purposes? So first off, umbrella policy. So I guess that's something everyone should have on their personal lines uh, as far as just your personal household, but also look at it as your business, depending on the size of your business and how much you may need, you know, anywhere from maybe a one to a $5 million umbrella policy is something you ought to really look at. Uh, your property and casualty agent can certainly kind of point you in direction, give you more information on how it works and uh, the cost of, of that, you know, type of policy itself. But again, it just gives you additional liability protection above and beyond you know, the regular um, insurance that you have maybe on the business itself or your work vehicles or anything, anything of that nature. Um, second portion there, workman's comp, obviously uh, very important to have. Uh, need to have some type of uh, workman comp policy in place. Just again, to protect the business still kind of falls under that liability type coverage umbrella as well. Uh, you want to make sure you're protected from that end and make sure the, you know, employees are protected as well if something were to happen uh, from that end. Lastly, this is something that I'd say is newer from in comparison to the other two is going to be the cyber security insurance. Obviously, very important in our business or I mean, really any business these days, if you're using some type of computer that has access to a client database or or anything like that. So cyber security is, a, is another policy that you can really look into that's getting more and more popular these days to protect against any type of, you know, if your um, system were it to get hacked into and client data stolen. I mean, again, 
we see uh, probably a headline every week uh, when some company's been breached and uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta have a plan in place and you gotta have a uh, potential policy there to, to take care of anything. If, if some information was, was compromised. So uh, very, very important in this day and time for sure. Um, going into the, the final piece, obviously this is a very important uh, op uh, pro pro slide as well when we talk about tax planning as far as entity, you know, well, should I set up an S Corp, a C Corp, a sole proprietorship, LLC? What are some other things that I can look at tax wise when running a business that can really help me um, going forward? So Trent, let, let's take a closer look into those sections. Well, the, the first section you'll see here, Brandon, we're, we're talking about leasing or owning a property. Uh, we see it both ways with the businesses that we work with. Uh, there are advantages of owning the property that you're going to occupy um, as your business and basically leasing that back to you uh, as a company. And um, definitely want to engage your CPA or accountant in regards to the tax rules associated with that. But then also... Uh, we bring the attorneys in to make sure we're drafting or, or having everything properly structured and, and make sure from a tax standpoint that we're, we're benefiting the corporation as much as possible in regards to a lease back, uh, especially uh, when that business has an opportunity to, to maybe save some taxes on there, but uh, you know, do it by whatever the tax code allows us to do. Now, the S Corp or the C Corp or the LLC as far as or sole proprietorship, how you structure your business, this will be in the second column, really boils down to what your goals are and how you're going to structure your business and, and how it should operate from, in, in my opinion, from a tax standpoint. The, the CPA is critical in working with you to determine which tax structure is going to be best for you or business structure is going to be best for you. Uh, that varies from one industry to the other. And it varies from person to person. So it, it's not a, a cure-all that everybody would come in and just determine they're going to be an escort. It doesn't always, or it's not always the best thing. LLC serve well for real estate uh, businesses. So again, it's just from person to person and working with the accountant, engaging your attorney and, and asking them specific questions in regards to that. Very important. Um, talk a little bit about the, the Section 179 deductions in regards to um, you know, business equipment, vehicles, et cetera. Yeah, so when you're looking at the Section 179, that's, that's a real popular one that we're looking at. Again, anytime you have some type of uh, equipment or vehicles or anything like that in the business name, you really got to sit down with your tax accountant and CPA and, and try to say, hey, what's the best way to look at this? So I'm probably going to depend on how much income your business is showing, right? Section 179, you're able just to really you know, potentially take all that deduction up front, uh, depending on how your, your income looked for the year, or it might make sense to take a, buy a piece of property or a piece of equipment, I mean, for the business, and then have a depreciation over time. So it kind of really depends on, you know, what your cash flow, your income would look like if you're starting up a business versus if you've been around for a long time and depending on where your financials are, you really need to, to look at, hey, should I take the 179 expense or, should I look at uh, potentially depreciating over a period of time, whatever makes sense tax-wise to that situation. Uh, so again, very powerful, um, you know, deduction there for sure. What about, um, what about the health insurance or the HSAs? That's another critical point that we've ran into in regards to talking to some business owners. And um, sometimes it's not as easy as you think because you've got to have a plan that, that is structured properly to allow for the HSA to be available. Yes, exactly. So that's, that's a huge part is for any small business owner. My, my P number one is just health insurance costs, right? It, it, what do we what do we do for health insurance? Do I want to do a group plan? Is my business big enough? Does it make sense? What are the additional costs? Again, something else as an, an employee wise, it might potential employee might be looking for is, is health insurance coverage. So HSAs are something that you can set up. A lot of business are setting that up, but you have to have a high deductible plan to be able to um, to have an HSA in place, health savings account. So again, you can build build this up. Uh, there's limits how much you can put in as an employee or a business owner to these plans, but you could also kind of carries forward to the over over the next couple of years. So we have some clients to basically kind of build these up in in preparation for retirement and can pay some medical expenses outside of it. But you do have to have a high deductible plan uh, to really to really be eligible for it. Right, and these. You know, what we talked about today, Brandon, are, are some of the high level things that we've seen over the years in working with businesses. 
and, and trying to hit those hot points, I guess, of what they need to focus on, you know, long term to be successful. Uh, so definitely advise, you know, the small businesses to, to engage financial specialists like ourselves, uh, being certified financial planners, but also their CPAs, their accounting firms, get real engaged with them, do, do active planning rather than passive planning with those firms. And then your attorney. Attorney is very important, too. Always good to run any type of legal uh, matter through your attorney and, and get a basis. But we, we quarterback that for a lot of businesses that we work with. So, you know, we're handling all that for the client and making sure taking a lot of that legwork off. So if there's any businesses or anything out there that, uh, you know, may have an interest in going through that process, uh, definitely just let me or Brandon know. We'll be glad to do that for you. Yeah, as, as Trent mentioned, I mean, a lot of stuff we covered, super high level from that end, but just want to kind of give you an introduction and some of the things that we've seen out there. So, uh, again, you know, certainly uh, reach out to us if you've got any questions, uh, if you need you know, any help on any of these type of planning, just general questions, we're always here to help. If, uh, got any other additional topics you want to hear about, just let us know. We're, we're open to do these educational ser series periodically on, on just what people want to hear. So, uh, but again, thanks for joining us. It's uh, Brandon Rogers and Trent Bradshaw with Mind Your Money. Have a great rest of the day.